you shouldn't be with somebody as fucked up as me. And I really am you fucked up. Here. No, but it's true, darling. Don't say that. I mean, I know people are just going to go crazy with why would you pay a cent for her to get out of prison? You would sell your soul to the devil to get out of, out of jail. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Then for you to ask me that December, I think it was, to, could I get some kind of a job, just like anything, a clerk, you know, I couldn't see myself going back to that. And, and I'm being really honest with you here. I know what you asked me. Hi sweeties, welcome back to the channel. As most of you know, me and my wife are getting divorced and this has been a really, really difficult journey and also really controversial. A lot of people have been sending me messages saying that they think Eileen was financially abusive against me. And to be honest, I don't know what to think about that. Sometimes I think that's true because of the things that she has done, but at the same time, I can't imagine her purposefully hurting me. I truly believe that her intentions were always good, but she didn't actually think she was going to hurt me somehow. We are very different people and we see things very differently. So I thought it was important to show her side of the story. Although we announced the divorce together, most of the discussion about why we got divorced and uh, what our marital problems were was just me, you know, just my side of things. So I thought it was important to give her the space to share her side because she doesn't have a big platform like I do, so I just want to be fair. There's a part of me that is still really hurt and angry and upset with the things that happened, but I am doing my best to be graceful and stay friends and keep things amicable and fair. This is actually a video me and Eileen filmed quite a few months ago while we were still together and it was meant to be a video of us explaining our marital problems to people because at that time we had mentioned to y'all that we were having lots of problems and people were really curious and we thought oh let's just make a video about it but it ended up being a bit too intense and we never posted it but now that everything has come to light and most of you have already seen my video explaining my version of our marital problems we both thought it was the right moment to post this so you can see Eileen's side of things so this video will be basically me bringing up my concerns about the things that happened and Eileen explaining her side and why she acted in certain ways do I agree with her responses? no <laughs> I disagree with most of it, to be honest, but I thought it was important to let her be heard so people can make up their own minds about things. Like I said before, this is a very difficult moment for both of us, so please try to be kind. Please don't send hate to her or to me. <laughs> so now I'm gonna let you go ahead and watch the video, but before we do so, please subscribe and activate the notifications so you know when I post new videos and give us a thumbs up because it really helps the channel. My nails are a mess. <laughs> it was a lot more serious than what you made it sound like in my opinion no i know maybe I it was just yeah. me no, being naive no it was me believing that that it was just a, a logistical challenge that i could i had made an appointment with them you know to go in the next morning okay so what i told you what i imparted to you was my impression of what the circumstance was i never had had a desk warrant before that i was aware of i never had this kind of thing happen before so um I did try to reconcile it before we left. I knew I had to handle it because that was the first time I was going back to America in years. So I, you know, since I'd moved back here so to the UK. So I made arrangements. I called the office, you know, the, um, the court system. I got through to them and I talked to somebody and she said, you know, I had the number of the warrant and everything. And what I told you was what I was told, that I could come in, you know, I was landing on a Friday, we were landing on a Friday or Thursday, I think it was, and I could come in on Friday and take care of the warrant. And that would be to answer the warrant. 
And what that entailed, I just thought I would go through a hearing and everything would be fine. Um, I didn't know myself, you know, so my ignorance, you know, affected you in a terrible way. So they were going to release you from yeah. Yeah, from the first jail. And then when they went to release it, they found that they you found had another, another warrant. warrant. Yeah, from... which I didn't know about. I've never known about. To me, it was very like, what? She has another warrant? Yeah, there were two hearings we had to go to. Yeah. Yeah. So that was... It very, was terrible. So it was a very a very bad thing for me to find out. And yeah, it was. It was like uh, we had the two hearings. The lawyer, um, which was great to have a representative. I mean, it was so worth the money, you know, in terms of what happened with the case, which was uh, they agreed to throw the case out. I mean, I know people are just going to go crazy with why would you pay a cent for her to get out of prison when she didn't have any money and you're spending, you know, you spent all this money, all your savings on the wedding. Well, of course I would because I didn't want you to get beaten up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was a terrible situation, you know what I mean? I, I'm, I'm, until you've been a person who's been in that situation, to be, you would sell your soul to the devil to get out of, out of jail, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. But soon after we got back to the UK, my granddad passed away and uh, that was very tough for me because at that time, because of everything that happened, I didn't have any money, so I, I couldn't go to Brazil to yeah. the funeral, but you know, how would you know? You know, of course, it's not your fault, how would you know? No, but, but I mean, the, the point is, and I th think you're too kind to say, is that you married somebody with no resources, do you know what I mean? And it's not no, but that's not the that's that's the thing that you get wrong. It's not about the money or resources. Is you putting yourself and us in that situation? No, but but what I mean is, if well, yeah, I of course that's what this video is about. But I mean, in terms of the money, I'm just saying one other aspect is that you know you couldn't go for your grandfather's funeral because we didn't have money to get you a ticket. You yeah, but you. I would have had the money if it wasn't for the bad situation. Well, that's what I'm saying. So No, yeah, but you said you married someone without resources. It makes it sound like, oh, it's because it was a problem because you didn't have money for the ticket. That's not the problem. The problem is I me not having the money because yeah, of I the understand. situation yeah. that happened. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm saying the same thing that we didn't. I'm saying we didn't have the money. Okay. Yeah, I'm not saying anything different from you. And then a few months after this, thing with my granddad happened. I found out that you took out two credit cards while we were in America and maxed them out. No, yeah. yeah, but not not within that time frame. Yes, it was because you got them while um, you we were in America. Well, I, I, I applied for them, but it took me like over the space of like two years, like no, it wasn't because at the beginning it was just the smaller amount. Yeah, but but what I mean, I, well, that's that's how I remember it. Yeah, but you're making it sound like I got the cards and then immediately started using them. I didn't. I waited. It was a while. Well, it, it, all right. Whatever. Well, that's good that, that you're here because we have different opinions of what happened or different perspective yeah i mean you're kind of making it sound like you know well this well your grandfather died i'm maxing out a card that wasn't the case i mean obviously but it isn't the case i would have bought you a ticket i mean it isn't the case they weren't that that close in... i'm not no, i'm not sure when exactly you maxed them out so you might probably maxed it out before my granddad passed away then no i didn't of course i did but, but you had the, the card when my granddad passed away because you got the card when we were in america i didn't get the cards when we were in america i i i got opened up an account i opened up an uh you know bank account and it was then that I applied. You know, I can look all this up. I mean, trust me, I didn't get it suddenly. You know, if, if, if you know, I would have used the cards for us in America. You probably will disagree with this, but that's how I remember it. I paid this credit card. They you didn't pay my credit card. Yeah, what I remember is I, at first I paid for it when you first maxed it out. Yeah. 
You didn't pay but then, me. But then Julie, down the line. that's not true. You it didn't is. pay, pay me credit I, Yeah, I remember transferring money to that. No, I don't know what you're talking no, but about, I remember but you have not paid any I did. of these. I, no, you I didn't. did the first one. The first one, I did. I'm sorry I disagree with you. I, I have a real understanding of what I've used those credit cards for. And there was, you know, you have had nothing to do. I've got you copies of the I cards. Remember never guitars. Used I remember you got guitars. But that had nothing to do with you. That was when you found out that I was using cards. You know what I mean? But I remember paying for a card because I was worried about credit scores. No, it, it, it really, I mean, I... If it had gotten to that point, I think, you know, I think I would have stopped if if you were then sharing with me that you were so concerned about, you know, it affecting that's, your credit. That's how I remember it, but maybe I'm, I don't know, I was, no, I, I was a bit under distress that time. I mean, you know, you're welcome to your perspective, but I I can say that I, I mean, I know what I, I, I own the crap I've done. But that isn't part of the crap I've done. I asked you if you could get a part-time job just mm -hmm. temporarily to help yeah. me pay it back. And then you borrow money from our friends. Um, and then, you know, and then you pay that back, you know, which is already really unfair. You know what I mean? And why I didn't act, I don't know. In part, it is because I haven't worked you know, since I left America, really, you know what I mean? And I've meant to maybe go back to technical writing, and then I haven't, you know, I've just been, anyway, and then, then for you to ask me that December, I think it was, to could I get some kind of a job, just like anything, a clerk, you know, I couldn't see myself going back to that. And, and I'm being really honest with you here. I know what you asked me, but I really believe that I would, you know, instead of just getting up and doing it, I didn't do it. You know, it's not that I said no. I said, I'm going to do this my way, which is I'm going to, you know, you've taught me how to edit. I'm going to do more on my channel. And then I didn't. And then, and then the sort of anger at each other, I think, you know, sort of, yeah. we both had reason to be angry. You a greater reason, really. And anybody yeah. would agree, you know. Yeah. You said that if it wasn't a nicer hotel, you would well, rather not go. What I said to you is, I don't want to travel and be made to, uh, you know, I don't have to travel. Um, you wanted me to go, I wanted to go, but I didn't have to go. What I ended up finding us was something that happened to be for Turkey, five star and all inclusive. So it ended up being what I thought, if I remember correctly, reasonably affordable. I didn't know it was a big stretch, but, you know, given the pattern of my behavior from what we're talking about today, I imagine now that I didn't see that this was a real stretch for you. It's not so much the money, it's more like the principle that yeah. I felt like ev after everything that I've been through, you could have just gone with me even if we stayed somewhere really shitty. Yeah, but I mean, <coughs> but things were related in time. Sorry, I understand what we're talking about here <coughs> is... You poor thing, Jesus. I'm sorry. Is a pattern of behavior. I think what's troubling here is you've married an older person who has had, you know, maladaptive episodes. You know what I mean? And then I brought that into our marriage. It's okay for somebody to have history. You know what I mean? And I can understand you being angry. Although we had beautiful times since all that, you know, yeah. then we done wonderful things, had great times always in the back of my head I've, I've had this anger yeah yeah and i think I, right, so i've dealt with it not in the best way uh, with because how do we even deal with with that like i've we've we've talked a lot we had the same conversation a million times before yeah, yeah. but i feel like even so i had this underlying anger and i've been a bit shitty and passive aggressive with you I mean, in a way, is it possible to overcome? I just don't know. You know, oh, so no, but I, but of course I, it is. Of course it is. No, but I don't know because some things just there's a bomb that goes off, or you know, a couple gets bombed. You know what I mean? Your innocence, innocence was shattered by this dose of of real, I mean, reality. 
I found out that you had more credit cards that I didn't know about. Yeah. And I asked you to please just return the credit cards. And I thought, I said to you that I was going to leave if you didn't return the credit cards. Do you remember that? Yeah, or, th or to keep one, was that? No, I asked you oh, to okay, return okay, all okay. of them. And you said, oh, no, can I at least keep one? And I said, no, if you keep a credit card, I'm going to leave. And yeah, I guess I remember that. I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fight you on this because I, I rem this one I remember very, okay. very clearly. Like I'm sure I said that that it was like mirrored the credit cards basically, and you said that you weren't gonna give up on the credit card because you were just trying to build your build up your yeah, credit yeah, score yeah. and you had a right to having a credit score, and you didn't didn't give it up for me. Like a lot of this discussion, I don't remember things being so cut and dry. It was no, it was like are, an, an ultimatum. Yeah, it was yeah, like it, a very clear ultimatum. I remember exactly. We were in the bathroom. We were in the shower, and I was like mm -hmm. by the door, and I said, "Like you've got to choose me or the credit cards." And you, I don't remember how you worded it, but basically, you chose the credit cards. Well, you weren't. Well, anyway, yeah, okay. Uh, I, maybe I just have a very damaged way of looking at things. I didn't think there was that. That finale. No, I said, like, if you, if you yeah. want this to work, remember yeah. I said, if you want to give this another chance, if you want this to work, just give up the, the credit cards and we'll try. Yeah. And you said, no, I'm, I'm going to keep at least one. Yeah, I guess I just was manipulating the situation to try to get what I wanted. And I think that's one of my problems, you know. But what makes Choices. me so sad is that you shouldn't be with somebody as fucked up as me. And I really am you fucked up. Here. No, but it's true, that. darling. Don't say that. No, but it is true. I mean, we really, you know. No, but you just need to go to therapy. Yeah. Because you're, you're a beautiful person. You have so much love. No, don't cry. Oh, I feel like a shitty no, person now because I'm making you cry. No, that's okay. But you, you're such a beautiful person. There's so many wonderful <laughs> things about you. You just need to, like, address it instead of just. Yeah, but, but it's okay. I wish I hadn't learned these lessons during my relationship with you. It's the saddest thing ever oh, is no. to have hurt and affected someone so much as I have you. Like, you don't deserve any of this. You don't deserve, you know, any of it, really. And, you know, I hate myself. Oh, don't cry. I'm so sorry. I'm it's so okay. sorry. No, that's all right. Don't be sorry. It's I was saying in the film that I feel really bad. No, but, I mean, it's important, don't you think? I don't know how, if I can grow and be healthier. That's what's really... Of course you can. So you need... No, don't do it for me. you got to do it for yourself. No, I know. I know. I know. No, Because you, you need to be... I want you to be happy. And you, you're so intelligent and so wonderful. And you have such a sweet heart. You do. You can achieve so much. And you can be so happy. But, but you just, need to take better care of yourself. No, but I heard you so... So... Uh, do you have a tissue anywhere? You, yeah. you have your little thing there. Um, you can talk about bad things that you think I've done. But nothing. You're, you're magical. You're like the most amazing wife. You know? Ooh, that was difficult to watch. I hadn't watched that in a while and in some ways it makes my blood boil, in some ways it makes me sad, in some ways it makes me relieved that this part of my life is ending and that now we are friends going forward. I am still processing this, I'm sure I will still be talking a lot about it. I hope that doesn't annoy you, but <laughs> this channel is about my life and uh, I think it's still gonna take me a little bit to fully move on. But once I do, I promise I will stop going on and on about it. But I appreciate your patience and your support. You have been amazing and so understanding. I really appreciate it so much. All right, so that's gonna be it for today. Thank you so much for watching and have a very, very lovely day. Mwah.